Teresa Myers, your first question will be to Suzanne Bonamici, please. Um, Suzanne, while a lot of the country is spending money and looking at ways to end our dependence on foreign oil, we have at least two companies here in Oregon looking for permissions to build plants to export liquefied natural gas out of the country. Um, one of those at least will run 36-inch pipelines and have a terminal in Congressional District 1. Would you work to support the private property owner's rights to deny access of their land to this pipeline? And do you support the export through the ports of, or of Oregon? Thank you for that question, Teresa. Uh, this is an issue that I faced uh, representing constituents uh, in my Senate district, uh, very concerned, uh, both from the private property owner perspective, which you mentioned, uh, but also people concerned about the environmental impacts and, and uh, uh, con very concerned about liquefied natural gas. Uh, I would not support uh, uh, increasing exports of liquefied natural gas. Yes, we need the jobs, but let's work on our renewable energy sources. Let's rebuild our electrical grid. Let's make sure that we are uh, promoting safe renewable alternatives and conservation. We have a great company, Solar World, in the 1st Congressional District. Let's work on safe alternatives that don't create uh, controversy and legal challenges like certainly any liquefied natural gas line going over private property would create. Rob Cornelis, you're up. Thank you. Certainly last year I supported LNG. It's a huge job creator in our district, especially in the north counties of Clatsop and Columbia. Now where they're placed, that's something local officials and citizens ought to be deciding. I don't think the federal government should step in. And certainly you want to protect landowner rights. And who, would, who would argue against that? I agree that we have so many natural resources in this state that need to be tapped, that would produce renewable energy, that are affordable, reliable, and safe. And, and we have terrific, we've been blessed here in Oregon with terrific resources that are largely out of our, out of our taking because we have, we have an overreaching federal government that doesn't permit us to do what we do best, whether it's manage our forests, whether it's use, using hydro, geothermal, whether it be solar, wind, wave, etc. There's so many things that we could do if we let Oregonians be innovative and take care of the environment like I know they do. Suzanne Bonamici, 30 seconds. Yes, I'm, I'm just a little uh, confused because my opponent said that he supported liquefied natural gas this year, but I'm not quite sure if he does, or last year, but I'm not quite sure if he does this year. And that's why I appreciate this opportunity for people to really know uh, our, who the candidates are and what they stand for. Because last year, Rob seemed to be a different person than he is this year. So I'm not really sure where he stands on this. Uh, I think the voters deserve to know. Rob Cornelis, the question will come from John Schrag. John? Um, Rob, sticking with the rural part of the district, according to the research by the Environmental Working Group, last year farmers in the first district received about $50 million in federal crop subsidies. Um, as in most jurisdictions, almost all those payments went to dairy, corn, and wheat farms, while people who grew other crops, such as hazelnuts, berries, um, strawberries, onions, don't get any farm subsidies. Um, first of all, is that dichotomy fair? And secondly, um, can you imagine any case where in the effort to close that big budget gap, you would support a reduction in subsidies to wheat, corn, or dairy? Well, thank you, John. First of all, let me address the last question, if I may. I've never said this year, Senator Bonamici, that I am against LNG, but I appreciate you paying attention to the things that I am saying. As far as John's question, subsidies to certain industries and not others is what's leading to these high deficits, this terrific debt that our kids are going to have to inherit. In fact, they're already inheriting it as well as crony capitalism. What's crony capitalism? It's when people who have he a heavy lobbying presence in Washington, D.C. or Salem are able to lobby for their interests while those who don't go without. Solyndra is a great example in California. $537 million of your money went to a company that was on its way to bankruptcy because they were, the government was paying back favors, presumably. This type of mistrust would be obvious uh, to all of us but it's not obvious to elected officials who continue to practice this. So I believe a more, a more fair, even playing field is, is correct, and that's also how we become more responsible in our spending. Suzanne Bonamici, it's your turn. Yes, certainly, this is a, an instance where uh, my opponent's uh, comments calls for getting more money out of politics. 
uh, I believe that we need to redirect agricultural subsidies, as I mentioned before, and not only uh, to benefit the small farmers and businesses in, in agriculture in this district, but also to lead to better health outcomes. And I know that there's uh, currently proposals uh, being discussed right now, and I look forward to working on those proposals. Now, whether that would mean a cut to dairy, corn, and wheat, it's all in the mix. It's all a matter of priorities. We must redirect uh, the subsidies to make sure that we're helping our small farmers and not just big agribusiness. Uh, and we, that will lead to better health outcomes as well. Mr. Cornelius, 30 seconds. Well, I just want to make sure that we understand in the first congressional district, we have five counties. Each of these counties has their own unique resources, whether it be timber and lumber products, whether it be fisheries on the coast, whether it be the, the vineyards in Yamhill County where I went to high school, whether it be the high-tech sector of Washington County or the business sector of Multnomah County. These are terrific assets we have. For years, we have been frankly, without effective representation in this district. I consider it one of the greatest districts in the, st in the country, and it needs a champion to match its talents and its abilities and its potential. We are running a bit out of time. We're going to go back to Steve Bagwell. And Steve, you'll ask a question, Suzanne Bonamici, and you guys will have each 30 seconds to answer the question, 15 seconds for rebuttal. Suzanne, and go ahead. Okay, a well, recent uh, Supreme Court decision struck down a key element of our campaign. Uh, spending limits uh, will open the door to to uh, almost unlimited corporate spending. Does that concern you? And if so, what would you do about it? It concerns me greatly. We need to work to get more money out of politics. Uh, I'm very concerned about the Citizens United decision, which I believe is the one you're mentioning, that will allow unlimited amount of money to come in secretly. We need not only disclosure, but I want to work on making sure that we can reverse that, either through legislation or through a con uh, constitutional amendment, uh, or hopefully someday through the Supreme Court. So yes, I'm very concerned about that. We need to work to get money out of politics. Mr. Cornelius, 30 seconds. And just to be clear, if I may, this Supreme Court decision did not allow either Senator Bonamici or I to receive unlimited contributions from corporations. Rather, it allows them to, and unions, and advocacy groups, and organizations, to independently spend money to uh, to endorse or to support their cause or their candidate. It's freedom of speech for individuals that is extended to them with their place of work, their place of advocacy. Suzanne Bonamici, you have 15 seconds for rebuttal. I'm a firm believer in freedom of speech for individuals, but I just don't happen to agree that a corporation is a person. We are going to begin our closing statements now. It's that time of the night, and we'll begin with you, Rob Cornelius. You have one minute, sir. Well, thank you, Steve, very much, and thank you for your viewers for showing interest in this particular race. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to announce that I have 19 mayors in the 1st Congressional District who have come out and endorsed me. Most of them endorsed me even before I won my primary nomination. And these mayors are not just Republicans. They're Democrats and independents alike. Now, why would they endorse me? because they know the number one issue that our district is facing is unemployment and that we have to grow our economy. They see me as the one who is most apt to be able to do that as a partner with them. You know, I also think it's very important to remember that if we continue to think the way that we th have thought as a state for all these years, we're probably going to get similar results that we've been getting. I'm asking you today to elevate your expectations of what a congressperson should be and what they should do. And I hope that if you'll, when you do that, you'll see that it's time to take a new direction and time to put someone in this position who will truly be our advocate and our champion for the first district so that we can be a leader again throughout the country. Suzanne Bonamici, you have one minute for your closing. It's no surprise that people hold Congress in low esteem right now. That's because there are too many people who say anything to get elected and then they get back to Washington and they forget about the people they're representing. Now, that's why we end up with the wrong priorities, with tax cuts uh, for millionaires instead of funding Social Security and Medicare, tax breaks for oil companies instead of funding education for our future. The question is, who can you trust to go back to Washington with the right priorities? Now, I've spent a lifetime fighting for fairness, for accountability, standing up for middle class families, for consumers, for seniors. And that's the kind of work that ethic that I will bring to Congress. I get things done. I bring people around the table. We craft solutions that work, solutions that are bipartisan. That is exactly what we need in Congress right now. 
Rob Cornelis, Suzanne Bonamici, thank you very much for being here. And mostly thank you for being on time. That almost never happens in a debate. We appreciate that. That wraps up this debate in the race for Oregon's first congressional district. A special thanks to the Independent Party of Oregon, McMinnville News Register, Hillsborough Argus, Forest Grove News Times, Patrick Preston, thank you for coming in as well. A reminder that voting for the Independent Party special primary election ends at 5 p.m. Tuesday, November 29th. Now, ballots for the special general election will be mailed out beginning January 13th, and those ballots are due January 31st. Of course, this is a very, very important election to replace uh, David Wu. For more information on the election and other political news, go to KATU.com, of course, and look for the political section of our news homepage. And I'm Steve Dunn. Thank you very much for being with us. Hope you've had a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow night, and good night.